I am in love. <laughs> and this is so, love. I just got chills, look. <laughs> Stop, <laughs> you're gonna make me cry. Your name has been in so many headlines lately. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I feel like your career since the first time that we talked has just obviously exploded because of Outer Banks, but to see your name in so many headlines, really focused on you introducing the world to Mariah and saying that you're pansexual. Yeah. What has that been like for you, first of all? I think it's awesome. I mean, yeah, I, I do too. I've been really open about it the entire time. So now everybody knows and that's nice. And I've gotten a lot of messages of, people saying I inspired them to come out, which is sick. And a lot of people were like, oh, I thought I was bi, but now that I didn't know what pi pansexual was, so now I realize I'm pansexual. I'm like, welcome to the club. Yeah, you're like, welcome to the world. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the timing to me, I know that you're saying that like, you've always been super open, but the timing of this really coming to the forefront of the public eye, I think is super special because it is Pride Month. Yeah. So I just want to know what does Pride Month mean to you and will you do anything to celebrate? Um, yeah, I think I've just been focusing on talking about it as much as I can. Um, Pride, Pride is special because I experienced my very first Pride in Atlanta. It was a really good time. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like really my first time being surrounded by solely my community and I feel like I was I learned so much not just like about other people's sexuality and gender but also my own of like <laughs> kind of finding a name for everything because I feel like a lot of pan people are the same it's just like I mean if you want to call it anything I guess the name is pansexual but like we're just, yeah. you know, so I'm just, like, just kind of like whoever and it's like call it whatever you want I like him like him so he I want to talk about that TikTok um, because, yeah, everyone did kind of freak out and and a lot of people, I guess, don't know or didn't know what pansexual meant. So yeah. from your perspective, like, what should we all know? I think it's just, um, which is crazy that I'm pan and I feel like I've been pan forever. Yeah. But I didn't really know what it meant either until like <laughs> a few years ago. I didn't know either. I was just kind of like, I think I just like whoever. Yeah. Like, well, here's what it is. Um, basically just loving people for people, um, regardless of gender or any type of sexuality, any type of anything, really. <laughs> I don't know how else. I could explain it. When then did you realize that you were fluid or that you were pan? Kind of take us back to that moment. And yeah, so I guess um, I dated a girl when I was 18 and I was like, yeah, I'm gay. And then I was like, but I still like boys. So I guess I'm bi. So I just like went on for a couple months feeling like I was bi. And then I worked with a trans boy on a show and we dated for a good while and I was like okay so what does that mean he's like well I guess you're pan I'm like okay I guess I'm pan and then so I just I just kind of went with the flow I just like realized that I kind of the same thing that my fans were figuring out of like oh I thought it was bi but I didn't realize that that was excluding so many people <laughs> the only reason why I say I'm pansexual is just like to make the inclusivity very clear I love that you said you've always felt very supported in your sexuality yeah um, a lot of people have not though like they don't have that support system um, so what do you say to those people of the LGBTQ plus community that have felt hatred or have felt discriminated against or have felt just um, had a hard time like sharing their feelings? I, yes, I've said this before that I had a very easy coming out. Everybody was really cool about it, but I'm not blind to the fact that I'm very lucky to have those people in my life and have the parents I have, you know? Um, if you're safe, come out. We want you here. <laughs> um, yeah. But you, like you know your surroundings more than I would. I, I, I've said this multiple times that if you don't feel safe to come out and you're worried, then maybe wait until you are safe and make sure. Um, but 
people to people who are dealing with and are struggling with the backlash and the hatred towards it. Um, you have a community that loves you. Yeah. Social media is a great outlet. You will find people. You will, no matter what kind of person you are in the world, you will find your person. Um, and you're always safe and welcome with me. Yeah. How did you tell your parents? And how old were you? <laughs> I know. Go ahead. I was 18. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I was scared to tell my mom. My mom's from lower Alabama, listen, and she's cool. She's very, she's a very sweet person, but some part of me is still nervous. Sometimes you feel a little more unsafe than you actually are. Mm -hmm. And so I waited until me and my mom were already in a fight. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, now is the perfect time. Yeah. I was like, you don't even know anything about me. I'm being really melodramatic. I'm like playing out a scene. And my mom's like, what don't I know about you? And I was like, you don't even know. I've been dating a girl for a month. And she goes, in the thickest Southern accent there ever was, goes, fine, Madison, be gay. I just, like, <laughs> and I'm so hard not to start laughing. I was like, oh, it was, Honestly, the funniest reaction I can think of is just, fine, Madison, be gay. Like, I don't, I don't care. Yeah. And then I told my dad and he goes, I know. My mom told her, like, my sister told her, I, my whole family was just like, yeah. Okay, yeah. No uh, surprise anybody. I got it, yes, bitches! Uh, I do want to talk about Mariah, if that's okay with you. Of course, oh my gosh, I'm waiting. <laughs> I love how giddy you just got. <laughs> <laughs> that Woo! smile is amazing. Um, well, first of all, when did you guys meet and how did you meet? We met, um, so I, we've probably been talking and in communication for a month and a half. Okay, so this was, was this after then the show came out? Yeah. Um, yes, it is. So she actually posted a TikTok. <laughs> And I saw it and I immediately was like, this is the cutest person I've ever seen in my life. I have to, I have to find her. I have to, I, I went, I found her Instagram. I followed her. I got on one of her lives and we started DMing and then, yeah. Did you guys communicate solely through social media at first before you actually met in person? Yes, completely social media. And then I was like, hey, like, let's hang out. I am on the East Coast. And I was like, where are you? And she was like, I'm in Charleston. I was like, you're lying to me right now. I was like, there's no way. She was like 20 minutes away from me this whole time. I had no idea. Oh my God. So what did you guys do the first time you hung out? We just hung out. We just, I was, um, staying at a hotel in Charleston at the time. And I was like, just come hang out. Like we can just chat, chill. There was, everything's closed. So it's yeah. not like you can like really I go know. anywhere or do anything. I was like, let's just hang out. And then, um, and then, yeah, and then she, she just came out to LA. She's never been out here. Um, she's never been to LA. She's never flown alone. I, I actually dropped her off at the airport this morning, which is really sad. Wait, was it hard to say bye to her? How long was she here for? Impossible to say bye. Um, uh, close to two weeks. Okay. Yeah. So it's only really been a month and a half, but do you feel like it's serious? I mean, you guys are I flying like across the country. It's very serious. And I had zero hesitation to post on social media about it. Cause I was like, her as a human being, I was like, no matter what happens, like you will be in my life forever. Like I care about her so much. I care about her family. Her family is incredible. Just as a person, just a very genuine, genuine person. Was that a conversation that you had? You know, should we put this on social media? Here's what could happen. It might blow up. And <laughs> you didn't expect every single news outlet to talk about I it. I didn't expect that. I was just like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm still new to all of this. I don't think anybody's really gonna care or say anything. Yeah. Um, and then that's not what happened at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was everywhere. <laughs> everywhere, which is really exciting. Yeah. Did she, how did she feel about that? She was like, take it at your own pace. She was like, I don't, she was like, you can post whatever. Okay. Yeah, it was a very quick, quick conversation. Yeah. yeah. What, what is it about her that you were so attracted to? Um, 
she's a very soft person. She's very gentle hearted and very kind. Um, she's very loving and you see that in like the way she loves basketball, the way she loves her family and you see like her loyalty and dedication to the things that she cares about. I'm getting emotional. Oh no, but no, but that's how it should be though. It's like, I mean, are, are you in love? I'm, I think I'm in love. <laughs> <laughs> and this is so, I just got chills, look. <laughs> Stop, you're gonna make me cry. I'm sorry, you're gonna make me cry. I just like, I love love so much and I love women. Me too, I love love. Has your family met her? Yes, actually, yeah. after um, <laughs> uh, three days after us hanging out. I, real soon. I, yeah, I was in North, I drove up to North Carolina and she was driving up to Charlotte the same day to stay in her dorm and to see people that she hadn't seen in a while. And then I was like, I'm only like two hours away from Charlotte. And she drove to my family's house, met everybody. Oh yeah. God. And then I went back to Charlotte with her and like met all her friends and, oh and then God. flew out from Charlotte to LA the next day. So this was like a very instant connection then. Absolutely. Did she watch Outer Banks? She did watch Outer Banks. She did. <laughs> before, <laughs> before she met you or after she met you? Before. Before. Did she say that she like had a crush on you or anything on the show? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's why she made that TikTok. She was like, hey girl, oh my God. give me my shot. And I was like, okay. That is so funny. When are you gonna see her next? What's what's that plan like? Um, I told her I'd never go a month without seeing her. So, tentatively, sometime in July, whenever I'm free and have a moment. To yeah, the, yeah. Like, how, how will you guys handle the long distance? Just like a lot of Facetimes and texts. And um, I think. I think it'll be pretty easy because both of us are gonna be busy. She's awesome. going back to school um, in July. So she's going to be busy. She's gonna be doing workouts or whatever they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Training. Yeah, okay. Athletic things. Yeah. <laughs> because of the platform that you have now, do you feel a responsibility to talk about sexuality and social issues and to help educate people. Yeah, I, I definitely enjoy it because I don't feel like it's very pressured on me. Nobody was like, Madison, you are the new face of, and I'm like, what are you talking about? I feel like I very much took it upon myself. And it's less of like, here, I'm, I'm a professional and here I'm going to educate you. It's more just like, here's what I'm doing with zero fears and I hope that it can empower you. I do want to talk about mental health, but I also want to talk about, so you made a comment in your Instagram live and you said that you don't believe in straight people. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, they're unicorns. And I'm just curious, like what you think, like, do you think it's a spectrum? I want yes, to I think I've like definitely understand. gotten a lot of DMs today of <laughs> homophobicness, jumping out of people being offended that they would even, that I would even oh my think. God that they would be, I was like, okay, relax. Yeah, they're like, calm down. They were you like, calm down. <laughs> yeah, I had somebody be like, um, they're like, that is so rude. I would never say that if I, to invalidate you, if I believed in pansexuality. And then in parentheses put, which I don't. I was like. <laughs> you're, you're like, okay. okay. All right, all right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. But, I think I definitely meant it more of like, it is a spectrum. Take spectrum. the time to figure it out. Like, yeah, they're just like, not that there aren't straight people, but there's just that they're like statistically too many. My boyfriend's back and you're gonna get in trouble. Hey, la, hey, la, my boyfriend's back. You mentioned earlier mental health and I know that you've talked about being diagnosed with uh, borderline personality disorder, mm -hmm. which thank you also for speaking out about that. Um, why was it important for you to share that? I feel like it helps. I feel like it's such a huge part of who I am. Mm -hmm. And I really do want people to be able to get to know me. Um, I'm not shy. I thrive in transparency. Um, and also like, I can't think, I, I didn't have anybody to look up to, not, that wasn't like a medical professional. Like I've said this, 
a thousand times i am not a medical professional i don't understand like the science behind mental health i can't pretend to know um i should further educate myself but i think it's also really important to speak from a voice of this is just something i'm going through it's not something that i know everything about i'm figuring it out day by day on my own um so that was a very important platform because I didn't, I didn't have anybody like that. Cause I'm not, I've said this, I'm not a therapy person. I'm very internal with the way that I like to deal with things. I like to self-educate on a lot of things. Um, and I know that there are a lot of other people who feel that way. Same thing with why I speak so much about like other ways to deal with mental health that aren't therapy because therapy isn't for me. It's never something I connected with. Probably my, I have like an authority figure problem, something like that. Something about, <laughs> something about talking to a stranger about all my problems and I just. I was gonna say like, did you have a bad experience in therapy ever? Um, no, it was just, I didn't feel huh. like I benefited from it. I feel like I got my diagnosis and that's what I needed. I needed a word to call it other than crazy. And I got that and figured it out because then I started realizing my own triggers because they're all different. Everyone's sure. different. Um, yep. And I know she, my therapist was like, you could do group therapy so you know you're not alone. And I'm like, I trust <laughs> that I'm not alone. I don't. <laughs> it's just like everything about that gave me more anxiety. And I know a lot of other people feel that way of like, what do I do when I don't want to be on medication or don't want to go to therapy I'm like well there's mm -hmm. so many other things you could do within yourself to take care of yourself when were you diagnosed with um bpd um i was 17 or 18. okay what had been going on i it made me really sad when you said people like they call it crazy and it's like it's not crazy yeah it's um literally not and i think it's <laughs> it's, it's just frustrating that people call it that of course yeah um, definitely a word that's been pushed on really anybody struggling with really anything, mm -hmm. um, instead of other people admitting that they're human beings, it's somehow easier to call people crazy. I don't know. I don't get it. I think it was just picking up on the consistencies. It's noticing patterns, noticing certain triggers, n not being able to calm yourself down. For me personally, I... There are a lot of pros and cons to my disorder. I'm discovering all of the pros, which I'm very thankful for. Um, what, what are some of them? Some of the pros of having personality disorder. A lot of, one of the main things is that likes and dislikes change often. So my aesthetic changes often. My music taste changes often. Um, so you know I say? I'm like, oh, I don't like this. It, I, I'll like it later. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, just, it's just for right now. I yeah. go through a lot of different phases. So I feel like I have a very broad personality, which allows me to connect with a lot of people. Um, being sensitive was such a hard thing because that's another one of the main components of this disorder is having an exposed nerve to every emotion and every feeling. But I think the bright side of that is that it allows me to connect with so many more people. I'm able to put myself in other people's shoes very easily and deliver empathy with authenticity. How is it working? I mean, I just think of like on set and I'm just curious how that. Yeah. Um, I I think acting has been a good outlet because on days where it's really hard to be myself, it's really easy to be somebody else. Flipping that switch of like, once you call action, my problems will be waiting for me whenever he calls cut, you know? What are the best ways that you have found to cope? Well, there are different types of things that need different things. Um, a lot of a lot of self care, <laughs> mm -hmm. all of the self the self care, you know, um, like taking that time for yourself. Yeah, meditating yeah. it's a huge one for me. A lot of people talk about oh Maddie and her crystals. I think a huge part of the reason I like crystals is because it's given me a better understanding for emotions. It's compartmentalizing what I'm feeling, mm -hmm. and I think that's something I really benefited from it. Like yeah, less about this is going this is going to solve all my problems and more about like 
making me be mindful of what's sure. going on. How do you and Mariah lean on each other and like support each other with what each of you guys are going through? I don't know much about her, but <laughs> yeah, um, both of us are very good listeners. Just communication. Both of us are good at communicating things and we haven't really had many issues. I mean, like she needs anything like I'm here and we're both able to know when to vocalize what we're feeling and also when to prioritize the other person. Like we found that balance very naturally.